Miss Hiller? The water's boiling. Hello! Ah! Look at them. They're all smiling. I didn't find my divorce a thing to smile about, but hey, Mrs. Doubtfire, what an incredible movie. It's one of my all-time favourites. Can you believe it? It's nearly 30 years old now. I mean, 30 years. Released in 1993. And it was groundbreaking at the time because it talked about divorce. It talked about the fact that children could potentially have happy lives after divorce. And just in case you've forgotten, here's a little clip right from the very end of the movie where Mrs. Doubtfire reads the letter. Dear Mrs. Doubtfire, two months ago my mum and dad decided to separate. Now they live in different houses. My brother Andrew says that we aren't a real family anymore. Is this true? Did I lose my family? Is there anything I could do to get my parents back together? Sincerely, Katie McCormick. Oh, my dear Katie. You know, some parents, when they're angry, they get along much better when they don't live together. They don't fight all the time and they can become better people and much better mummies and daddies for you. And sometimes they get back together. And sometimes they don't, dear. And if they don't, don't blame yourself. Just because they don't love each other anymore doesn't mean that they don't love you. Now, there are all sorts of different families, Kitty. Some families have one mommy, some families have one daddy or, or two families. And some children live with their uncle or aunt. Some live with their grandparents, or some children live with foster parents. And some live in separate homes and separate neighborhoods in different areas of the country. And they may not see each other for days, weeks, months, or even years at a time. But if there's love, dear, those are the ties that bind. And you'll have a family in your heart forever. So, 30 years ago, we knew the truth. So how come now, in 2022, we're trying to stop parents and grandparents having a meaningful relationship with their children? We need to have a closer look at the movie to see some of the key situations that might possibly have a different outcome for children. And we're going to start with a deleted scene where... Mrs. Stoutfire is having a conversation with the neighbour and she tells him about how despicable Daniel is. Have a listen. You're that busy woman who lives next door. Mrs. Hillard spoke so highly of you and you were a great deal of help with the problems with her ex. He's a monster. Why? Everyone knows that he cheated on his wife. Really? I've heard that he beat her, and I know that he slapped the children. Right? I never did that. I beg your pardon? I never heard that he did that. She never alluded to that. You'll have to go through me. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> Clearly, there were lots of lies in there. The thing is, in the movie, we just disregard them. with oh, they're, they're nothing to worry about. But in real life, those lies take a hold. People begin to remember them and begin to think they're true. And that's one reason why the spiral of deceit and lies starts to get bigger and bigger. If you've gone through a divorce, you will probably also relate big time to the court scenes. In the first court scene, we see how Daniel Hillard or Robin Williams is just so upset that he can only have one day a week visitation rights or contact as we call them here in the UK because he needs his children and that's the trigger that causes Mrs. Doubtfire to be created. That it is not in a child's best interest to deprive him or her of an obviously loving father. However, since at the present time Mr. Hillard has no place to live and no employment, it is the court's ruling to award sole custody to Mrs. Hillard. No. 
Mr. Hillard will have visitation rights every Saturday. Can't you do something? He's already made his decision. Or isn't it traditional system like I object or something? Your Honor, please. I mean, every Saturday, it's one day a week. That's not enough. I have to be with my children. It's not a question, really. I mean, I have to be with them, sir, please. I know it seems like a lot, but for me, it's not enough, really. I, I've, I've been away from them for more than one day since the day they were born. Then in the second court scene, we see that incredible speech that he makes. Your Honor, in the past two months, I've secured a residence. I've refurbished that residence and made it an environment fit for children. Those are your words. I'm also holding down a job as a shipping clerk. So I, I believe I met your requirements. I had a schedule. In regards to my behavior, I can only plead insanity. Because ever since my children were born, the moment I looked at them, I was crazy about them. Once I held them, I was hooked. I'm addicted to my children, sir. I love them with all my heart. And the idea of someone telling me I can't be with them, I can't see them every day, it's like someone saying, I, I can't have air. I can't live without air, and I, I can't live without them. You've been able to fool a lot of people into believing that you're a 60-year-old woman. No easy task. And your little speech seemed to be very heartfelt and genuine. But I believe it to be a terrific performance by a very gifted actor, nothing more. No, it's not that. The reality, Mr. Hillard, is that your lifestyle over the past months has been very unorthodox. And I refuse to further subject three innocent children to your peculiar and potentially harmful behavior. It is this court's decision to award full custody to Mrs. Hillard. Oh God, no sir, please. You will have supervised visitation rights every Saturday. Supervised, sir? Yes. A court liaison will accompany you when you spend time with the children. I am suggesting a period of psychological testing and perhaps treatment for you, Mr. Hillard. We will re-examine this case one year from now. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Did you feel his pain? I sure could relate to it. First moment you hold your children, yes, you fall in love with them. But did you see his disgust at supervised visits? If you're a parent who has had the experience of supervised visits and you've done absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, it's arguable that Robin Williams' character definitely deserved to have supervised visits. However, we all know that that isn't true. So here's another little clip right from the end of the movie where Robin Williams spells out what those visits mean. But the kids, I, uh, I don't want to hurt our children. So what do you want me to do? Want me to pretend like everything's all right, put on a happy face, smile? Jesus, Randy, you took my children away from me. I can only see them now with supervision. Some woman who comes and watches me with the kids like I'm some sort of deviant. If I try to hug them, she wonders why. You know what that's like? You just sat there in that courtroom. You knew the truth. You didn't say a word. You let that judge pass that despicable sentence. I was angry. Oh. Look, you hurt me. Oh, too. you ripped oh, my heart out. Will you come back to do it again? I lied. Uh, you know what? What? I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do anymore who did what to whom. I also want you to have a little look at this deleted clip. And it probably wasn't included in the movie because it was just so emotive. But it brings home that we've got to keep our children at the heart of the family and not caught in the middle. And this clip just shows how these children are feeling so trapped and caught in a web that they don't like. Oh dear you. You're just trying to erase it like it doesn't exist. You're trying to destroy the fact that we're a family. This family doesn't work. How it works if it's you let it work. It's harmful for them to be in this family than it is for them to be in a divorce family. That they can't adjust to. No, they can't adjust to that. I'm their father. They love me. I'm their mother. They love me. I hate you both.
let's go back to that court scene. What if Miranda had decided to just go with the court ruling that Daniel had to have, those supervised visits? What if she'd carried on with that? What would that have done to Daniel? More importantly, what message does this give the children? That dad's dangerous, that he can't be trusted. Not only is mum saying that, the neighbours are saying that, now the court is saying that. And if mum didn't have the heart that she had and wanted to somehow have her own way because she considered that was best for the children, would dad and dad's family and I can't remember what uncle and auntie were called, would they all be wiped out from their children's lives? And just in case you're thinking, oh, but he's a man, I'm a woman. I can relate to the character that Robin Williams plays, Daniel Hillard. And when I went to court, my ex was the one who had the history of fraud and theft and deceit. And he put on the performance of his life because he managed to convince the court that our daughter was better off with him and that she should have absolutely no contact with me. And I was a safe, loving parent with a clean record. In fact, I'm a primary school teacher. And yet he painted it that I was a danger to her. Come on, let's keep our children at the heart of the family and not caught in the middle.